Hi, this is Cycle 2, Week 1 Science. This is experiment number 17 in Van Cleve's book. Same place. Thank you. As you can see, I have extra lovely helpers today. I have uh, two daughters with me, and I always have uh, my beautiful assistant wife behind uh, the camera. Today's experiment is an excellent uh, practical demonstration of how geostationary orbit is obtained. In order to do this experiment, you do need a little bit of prep work. You need two pieces of string or, uh, or in, and or a jump rope works very well uh, also. We're going to demonstrate uh, how the principle is achieved uh, and then we'll talk uh, about uh, some of the details about how it is achieved. So in order to do this experiment, we're going to have one student stand still. We're going to, to give to her two pieces <coughs> of rope. We're going to have an, the other student come this way. <laughs> there. Then. There you go. Okay. And then I'm going to say three, two, one, and then uh, we are going to make two different circles. Uh, as you're doing this, you want to encourage the students to pay attention to the speed at which the two different people are moving. It's important that the two pieces of rope have two different lengths. A different challenge as we're making this video is uh, that her stride is much smaller than mine, and so I'm going to try and match my stride, shorten my stride to match hers. But if you're using children of about the same height, you won't have any issue with that uh, when you're doing the demonstration yourself. Are we ready to begin? Yes. Three, two, one, go. As we're moving in a circle, we are keeping our, the lines taut. We're not letting slack form. We're going to complete one revolution. Stop. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Let's come back together for a minute. Now, this way, this way. So what happened? What happened? The person who had the shorter string completed the revolution, of course, much faster. The circle was not as big. In order uh, for me to uh, keep up with her matching strides, I had to take many more steps than she did because my, my circle uh, was much larger. But in fact, <clears throat> both of us were demonstrating the, the principle of geostationary orbit. Geostationary orbit is uh, something that's very difficult to obtain. Satellites are put into geostationary orbit in a very precise manner. Uh, in order for the satellites to, to move into that kind of an orbit, they have to, to orbit directly over the equator of the Earth. They are also about 22,000 miles into the sky, into space. So what that means, then if they're in a successful geostationary orbit, if we were standing at the equator and we could look up into the sky and see the satellites with our unaided eyes, then the satellites would appear not to move. They would appear stationary. But in fact, of course, the Earth is rotating and they are simply moving with us. So not only do they have to be very far away, about 22,000 miles into space, they also have to be moving at a great speed. Uh, a car on the freeway drives about 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour, but those satellites that are in space are traveling nearly two miles a second. Oh two God. miles a second. They are moving around the Earth uh, at that rate of speed. And doing so gives them an orbital time of approximately 24 hours, which is why they appear to stand still. Like that is more like a scientist. Thank you, that is true. <laughs> they, they appear to stand still uh, when seen from the Earth. Uh, in Van Cleve's book, they, they talk about uh, doing this experiment with just two people, uh, and I think that, that, that works very, very well, especially if you have one jump rope. But if you have enough time, and if you have enough space, space is important as you're doing this experiment, I think th there's some really good um, illustration that can also be seen if you have a couple of different students, three students doing it, instead of just two. This is uh, Cycle 2, Week 1 Science, Experiment number 17. 